So as you know, having gone to the greatest university in the world, Washington State University, I'm also a fan of the football team of the Cougars. And of course, they did really well yesterday. They beat Utah for the fourth straight season. But in addition to being a Cougar fan, in the last five years or so, I've also become a fan of another college football team, and that's the Florida State Seminoles. Because I know people who have gone to Florida State. In fact, one of my friends actually played for the Seminoles back in the 1980s. And my friend Bart, who I'm going to speak about today, came to mind as I was re reflecting upon the first reading from the book of Numbers and also on our gospel today. Because in many ways, he's lived the events that took place uh, that we've just heard proclaimed. Now, when Bart was growing up, he's my age, he's just a year younger than me, he was fixated upon football. He always wanted to play football. He was a big guy. He played on the defensive line. And he, in high school, developed three very particular goals that he began to strive for. It really became the focus of his entire life. He wanted to play on a nationally ranked team that would vie for the national championship. That was his first goal. Second goal, he wanted to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He wanted fame. And then thirdly, he wanted to play for the National Football League. He wanted to play on an NFL team. And he began to pursue these goals very, very methodically. Now the thing is, as he began to pursue these goals, things didn't always work out the way he wanted them to work out. So he, was, he signed up with the Florida State Seminoles, and he was playing for, at the time, a, a nationally ranked team. Their coach, Bobby Bowden, was at the time in the 80s, really bringing that football program into its own. And it became one of the great and elite programs, and, and still kind of is, they're having a down year this year. But he's the one that built it up. And they were going to vie for the national championship. And so Bart, of course, was excited. The thing is that Bart didn't always start because he was prone to some injuries. And there was always those other players that were just a little bit better than he was on the defensive line, so they got more playing time than he did. And as a result, you know, he began to complain. He began to grumble. And he began to kind of develop a negative attitude. At the same time, he still wanted to live this life as a star student athlete. So in November of 1986, they're playing their arch rivals, the Miami Hurricanes. And this is another team that was also vying for the championship. So Bart is there playing in that game. And he has the ability to play a fair amount of the game. And he gets on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a result of his playing time in that game. But here's the deal. The star of the Sports Illustrated cover was their quarterback, Vinny Testaverde, who won the Heisman Trophy that year. And behind him was Bart in his gold Seminoles helmet in his hand, reaching out, missing the tackle of Vinny Testaverde <laughs> as he runs in and scores a touchdown, and they win that game. That was the only game the Seminoles lost that year. They won their bowl game against Nebraska, and they came in number two in the national polls behind the Miami Hurricanes. So Bart complains, he grumbles, he goes into a negative place, and he kind of you know, lives a kind of a destructive life. As he graduates from college, he does get picked up eventually by an NFL team. He plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But even as in his college days, his playing time was mixed. He didn't play all the time. He was injured a lot and prone to injuries. And he comes to this point where he's really at his low point. He's in the locker room of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and, he, and he's just at the lowest point he's ever been. He's grumbling, and who's he grumble against? Well, his family, his friends, um, against God. And he gets to this point where he realizes that perhaps football is not all of what he is about. That maybe, in fact, there's something else other than football that is to be his core. And as he had that little change of mind and a little change of heart, he says he felt the power of the Holy Spirit rush upon him in the locker room that day from the top of his head to the tips of his toes. And for the very first time, he experienced in a real tangible way the love of his heavenly Father for him in his life. And he felt and understood what blessing was in his life for the very first time in his life. And he was able to look at even the things he did in football as, as a blessing, but that they weren't meant to be the totality of his life. And that, in fact, he had been blessed in many, many ways. And he understood really what his call was to be, was to be a good and loving husband, 
a good and loving father, and ultimately to go into ministry, into evangelization, and become a Catholic retreat master, speaker at retreats and conferences, which he has been doing in a very powerful and beautiful and successful way for over 20 years now. He's been in ministry along with his his brother Bob and, and several others that I know. I've done ministry with him. That's why I'm telling you Bart's story because it was a complete turnaround. But for him, the key to it was understanding that the grumbling, the complaining, the negativity had to end in order for him to be opened up to blessing. And that's what the people of Moses' Moses' time were dealing with. The people of Israel, you know, were grumbling constantly. After they were set free from slavery in Egypt, Moses and Aaron led them out into the desert on the way to the promised land. But immediately, instead of rejoicing over their freedom, they began to grumble and complain against God and against Moses. Why have you led us out in this desert to die here when we could have been comfortable even in slavery in Egypt? We don't have any water, so what does God do? He gives them water. We don't have any meat to eat. What does God do? He gives them meat. We don't have any bread to sustain us. And what does God do? He gives them manna from heaven. And yet they still complain. And here they are now. Moses really is at his wit's end. God decides to raise up prophets among the people to lift up the spiritual lives of the people of Israel. And who complains? Moses' key assistant, his key aide. These 70 were chosen to be prophets, and two of them didn't get the memo to be in the camp that day, and yet the Holy Spirit rushed down upon all of those who were chosen, even those two with the funny names who were outside of the camp. The Spirit came upon them, and Moses' assistant said, Moses, look what they're doing. They're prophesying. They weren't there that day. You need to tell them to be quiet. And Moses had had it. He had had it with the grumbling and the complaining, even of, of his closest assistant. And he said, would that all the people of Israel be prophets. Would that the Spirit come down upon all of the people. Moses had had it. But the Spirit did come upon those 70. And it was, again, part of the people's formation. It took them 40 years, but eventually they were formed so that they could enter rightly into the promised land and receive the Lord's fullness of their, his blessing upon them. And in the gospel today, the reason why I thought about Bart II in the gospel, after the spirit rushes down upon him, is that in the, in the gospel, Jesus is saying, whatever it is that keeps you from receiving fully my blessing in your life, you need to cut it out of your life. So don't take him literally. I don't want you plucking your eyes out or cutting your fingers and hands off here. I don't want a bloody mess here in the church today, all right? But if there's something in your life that keeps you from receiving God's blessing, you need to get rid of it. And it might be football. It might be sports. Many young families, are, they're just obsessed with their kids playing all the sports. Maybe there needs to be a little bit of balance there. Maybe that's keeping them from living fully as to God's beloved sons and daughters. If it's video games or your iPad, your cell phone, or whatever it is that you're obsessed with, perhaps even it's an addiction or a vice that just gets you down and has an enslavement on you, you need to cut it out of your life. You need to get rid of it because it is vying for God's attention in your life. It's blocking you from receiving God's blessing in your life. It even might be a bad relationship. It might be a friendship with someone that's really not good for you or for them. You need to maybe cut it out or have it in a proper perspective or balance so that you can live fully as God desires you to live. The thing that Bart learned in the, in the Tampa Bay locker room that day was that his life was not all defined about football that he had been given other blessings that he needed to live fully into, the blessings of fatherhood and marriage and ultimately serving God in a very important way in a transforming ministry that he and his brother and others are involved in, transforming the church. That was his destiny and that was his call. And all he had to do was to remove the obstacle just a little bit, just to open his heart, and he was flooded with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the love of God in his life, and to fully receive God's blessing. Would that we all be prophets here. Would that the Spirit rush down upon each and every one of us here as well. That's what Moses desired. That's what I desire for all of us here this day. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.